Okay, calling the uh, meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. Uh, the first thing is the minutes. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded. Do I have any corrections or changes? Right. Um, on the back page, it's third line. The painter said he would vote to use the funds uh, as town meeting recommended. I believe he was speaking personally. I don't think he was speaking as a member of the school committee. He said he qualified at his beginning, so I would just ask him, you can correct me if I'm wrong, with it, David, to say, painter said he personally would vote for the use of the funds. Yeah. Okay, so painter said he would personally. As one member, how about that? Yeah, okay, I just want to point it out. As one member of the school committee. I think he was dissociating himself. Yeah, was that. Well, yeah. but he's, he was talking that he is, is, as one member of the committee, would vote to do it. Okay. He said that explicitly, in fact. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, um, I get in the middle where it says voted to table discussion. I'm not quite sure what, what the manager can means. Hmm. Uh, oh, voted, thank you. That's a goof. Voted to table discussion until a meeting with the manager or something like that. <clears throat> Where's that at? Okay, right in the, about the middle of the first page, we're voting to table discussion. It's just awkward wording, that's all. Maybe, maybe they meant when, not with. Yeah. Well, we voted the table to discussion until March 5th when the manager would be before us, so. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, on the second sentence, uh, second line after Article 45, if, Plan made 10 years ago. For some reason, it struck me it was, it was 15 years ago. <clears throat> Anybody remember? I thought I could like 10. Okay. And Article 42. It probably is 15, though. <laughs> but that's not what she said. Yeah. Article 42, second line, the last word I think is misspelled. So, holiday lights already exist. And that was unanimous. Now, Peter put some of these things in here on purpose just to make sure you, <laughs> you're really reading. <laughs> Old Chinese custom. <laughs> What's called torture. <laughs> okay, are there any other corrections or? Okay, motion's been made and seconded uh, to accept the minutes as corrected. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, done. Now, uh, let me just mention one thing. Um, we've been sent, uh, Gloria has been sending, and I'm trying to encourage as many people who are coming before us to email their handouts ahead of, you know, ahead of time. Uh, one of the emails was on next Wednesday's car uh, oil products, and apparently it's like 20 pages. So uh, I, I don't want her killing more trees than is necessary. So sometimes you can just print out a couple of pages yourself that summarize it. So we, she won't make copies of that unless you ask. If you want her to make a hard copy for you, just, just email it. Uh, you know, she'll make hard copies. Uh, but if you're perfectly willing to read it off the computer and print out a page or do that you want, uh, is it, does that sound reasonable to people? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, and Okay, uh, the Arlington Tourism Committee got the budget with us, and uh, they actually reduced their budget. I think last year it was 225,000, uh, 200, 2,000, sure. yeah, there it is, 2,225, and now they're asking 1,775, which I think is actually what we had given her at one point, but for a little bit of symbolism. Uh, so the request is for 1,775 in the discussion. Motion? So moved. Second. 
Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion, comments? Okay, all those in favor of the Arlington Tourism and Economic Development Committee budget of 1,775, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay. Instead, we could just transfer the money that they've actually spent uh, from the reserve fund and, uh, and go with it that way. Um, I hate to put things on the recap, sort of postponing. Okay. Uh, yes, Charlie? I have a question. No. Why didn't you say you are for next year? It was in pretty bad condition. <laughs> Besides, then the Boys and Girls Club will be out, you know, my 20 bucks. Then I'm sure they depend upon us. Okay, uh, the article for today is on water bodies. So, Jane? Uh, whichever. They've improved the microphone system, so as long as you talk towards the table, But if you're going to be down there, you're going to speak loudly because the chairman's hearing is. Just the chairman? <laughs> That's the only one I can speak for. Okay. I'm Jane Howard, and um, you see that Article 39 is exactly as it was last year. Uh, I'm representing the uh, various uh, environment groups and the standing committee. And we have Nathaniel Stevens here from the Conservation Commission. We have Teresa Benedictus here from the Public Works Department. Brad Barber from SpyCon. David White from the Reservoir Group. And Bill Eichmann from the Reservoir Group. I mean, from the SpyCon Group as well. And we want to thank you for your support of the various water bodies articles that we've had over the years and your recommended vote and also your presentation to town meeting. And I think that Brad has a few words to say after me, and then Teresa will speak to the spreadsheet that Gloria has <coughs> passed out tonight. And then we'll take questions. Sounds good. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Brad Barber. Um, I'm co-chair of the SpyCon committee with uh, Steve Ritchie who was not able to come tonight because he was out of town. Um, we've been, uh, last year we asked for 20000 for the water bodies fund. 
Um, this allows us to take 50,000, I'm sorry, yes, 50,000 for the water bodies fund. Um, this allows us to, most of our money is spent um, very early in the fiscal year and actually the, at the end of the previous fiscal year. Um, we actually need, for instance, this year we treated spy on uh, with sonar, which is an expensive treatment. Um, our next treatment we anticipate will be in three years. Uh, and we did that in, or in, in the springtime. Um, by having it, the money in the water bodies fund, it allows us to smooth out our expenses over the years. Uh, we, our, our, the water bodies fund is set up for all of town's water bodies. Um, specifically, most of the money currently is being spent on Spy Pond and the reservoir. We can clearly, and, and, and if requests come in, be able to use that money also towards other uh, projects for um, some of the other water bodies in town. Um, we've worked very closely with DPW, Predictor Producer uh, Benedictus. She's been fabulous to work for. I, I guess it's the other way around, and, and hopefully she enjoys working for us since it's in the end contracts with the town uh, that drive these projects. Um, this uh, this year, SpyCon has been remarkably clear and, and used. It's used by boaters, by sailing, uh, by canoers. So the town has an active program now with kayaks in the summer. Uh, uh, people who've never been on the water are now able to get on the water. Uh, and the reservoir has had a very active program in getting rid of water chestnuts. Um, in fact, I was riding back with a friend of mine, a co-worker, and he says he couldn't believe the quantity of water chestnuts that were pulled out of the reservoir. It was sort of similar size to a subway car worth of, of material that was pulled out uh, this year. Um, I'd like to present uh, Teresa, I'm sure you know, and uh, let her talk to you through some of the numbers um, that are involved behind our request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to Stephen, it just felt the worst. Um, I've been using this spreadsheet for two years, and building it as the years go by, and I've just been adding more history and more detail as time goes by. Uh, the front side, I consider, <coughs> the one that has a bottom name on the bottom. That shows the funding, the uh, appropriations that we've gotten through as you can see our, um, going back as far as 09, when we started this separate account, we can track the monies, and you see the appropriations we've been getting 15, 15, 20, and then 50 these last couple of years. And then you can also see down below, I get detail on the separate fund within the fund, I call it for the frag might exist by that sub-account is completely funded by donations uh, to the tune of more than $9,000. Um, I still have remaining for that specialty work at SPY uh, 2,870 um, set aside. And we did, in addition to the outside fees, <coughs> we got uh, $1,300 in donations uh, this uh, current fiscal year that's reflected on the front. So you can see in the FY14 column, we have the carryover of 23,000, we got the appropriation of 50, with the donations of 1,300, expecting to be budgeting expenses of $66,000, which are broken out on the back. We would end up all those things happening with a little over 9,000 at the end of this fiscal year. <coughs> if you want to know the whys and wherefores of what we spent, how we spent it through the years, is broken out on the back side here. We're focused on uh, this current fiscal 
is actually contributing, help is partly contributing to the problem at the rest. I'm sorry, contributing to the problem. Is, is it fair to say that Lexington is contributing to the, the water quality problem at the rest? It's hard to say. I think they, I, I, I should turn the data on what the science behind why the water chestnuts are there, but some of the watershed <coughs> the streams come, flow from Lexington and obviously into the rest. It's started by the bridge to a little bit of there, and that was just up there. Also, Sorry, sir. Could you could you stand up? And speak? <coughs> Sorry, David, the you acoustics in here are not the greatest. Okay. The water chestnuts are annual plant. They have big seeds, and sometimes the birds bring the seeds in. So once they get established in the water body, they just expand and expand until they're controlled. And the present, present plan is to basically control them so they're down to a much lesser expanse than the present. Once it's down to a lower level. The effort requires much less to control. Harvesting every year, you basically reduce the seed bank. But I think also the question was, is Lexington contributing? Is there something from their side of the watershed that's contributing? So I mean, it's, it's, it's going to grow. It's growing no matter what. No matter what about what storm drain, storm runoff? Is, is that contributing? Is Lexington's runoff into the res contributing to the problem? Well, in the sense they have storm drains draining to the reservoir. That to the nutrients in the reservoir. They would. Yeah. So and, and, we should, that, yeah. and we should be fair. Lexington has been cooperative with their DPW. And uh, yeah. Teresa can, can say that, that. Although they're not contributing cash to the effort, it certainly allowed, uh, helped reduce the project costs by allowing the harvesters to enter and exit through their side of the res. And I believe they also assist with the disposal mm -hmm. of the water chestnuts once they're dried out. I believe they're just uh, depositing at the Lexington. They have. Yeah, yard, so that's some savings too. We don't have to travel this far. So it would be nice to get some cash to pay directly to the contract, but they are providing some in kind services. And, and my last question is Has there been any effort to survey the needs of the other water bodies in town, particularly McLennan Park? Any water body, anything that it would be, whether it be the detention pond at McLennan. Um, and, and, and a lot of that is 
notebook, I believe. Um, I, I, the Conservation Commission is worried about that too. Um, so, and the open, open space commission. And the open, open space commission. And it's a regular topic on um, on protecting those waterways through the Water Bodies Act. Uh, Stephen, you yeah, try. Good question. This is uh, similar to the res from Lexington. Is, is the town of Winchester or the city of Venture doing anything for the upper Mystic Lakes or yeah, even lower, I guess, in the case of a uh, method? The Mystic Lakes and River under the uh, state jurisdiction, the old MDC uh, Department of Conservation. Of, but isn't that a state issue more than a local? Uh, DCR, I believe, owns maybe owns the dam, and then the, the park area on the west side of the river is the Mystic Lakes and River. Yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, let's say those balances are available. Uh, what kind of things could you foresee that, or that might pop up that you'd have to spend money that you didn't originally uh, plan on? That might some of that money might be used for. If it was a bad algae bloom in spy, we could we've been lucky the last few years, but that could chew up some money fast. Um, if we weren't continuing to be successful with the water chestnuts at the res, we might have to at be spending more to get the chestnuts out of there rather than move ground on what we've uh, achieved. Um, I'm pretty well set on the frag money because that's staying under control and I have extra money, so I feel comfortable with that. Um, and like, like uh, you folks mentioned, you know, some other water body out there that, you know, something happens at the red, something different happens at Hills Pond, like, things are pretty good up there now, but we've, we've certainly spent a lot of money in the past at Hills so, Pond. So do you see some of that balance as reserves against these just, things possibly just happening? Case, right. And then when we come, we don't always, we don't get the money always neatly fitting with when we need to spend it. So if we don't, we need to do work in June, um, if we don't have a fund balance, we, if we can't execute a contract at the time that we need to, we can lose control on some of these things because it's kind of a seasonal deal. You don't pull the trigger at the right time, you end up spending more money the next year, which has happened in the past. Sir? Well, one of my worries is that another one of these invasive species are found in Spy Pond. We currently are free of water chestnuts in Spy Pond, and um, that will be a big problem. The mosques and some of the uh, water bodies and <coughs> are starting to see that would be a big problem. Um, we're currently, one of the changes that has happened in the last few years is we're now doing uh, regular surveys of the, of the water bodies um, to try to get a head start when uh, the four columns get up and Okay, Alan? Um, in the Frank Mighty's account, uh, the revenue donations line, the FY10 is 9,000 and 4,100. Is that a one time uh, campaign to raise money or would that be something to do over five years? Or was that, was that just going to go away? Um, uh, so that was, I can speak yeah. to that. Um, that was a project that I was uh, involved in. Um, there was, for those of you who, who visited the pond, what was it, five years ago now, four years ago? Um, we had 15 wall, foot high walls of vegetation that in some places were 100 feet deep from the water body, from the edge of the water to the edge of the dry mines. Um, almost all of that is now taken care of. Um, our last, hopefully last really big treatment was done this year. Um, we anticipate Phragmites has the advantage over things like water chestnuts that it doesn't explode. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's more a, a, all of a sudden you've got, you know, you didn't know you had a problem and eventually you did. Um, our fundraising was, it was primarily done at one time and we sent people out a request and we were, we were pleasantly surprised at the amount of money that came in. Um, the other thing is that Frag Money is, is not that expensive. Compared to the other things, it's very inexpensive to do. Um, and so we, we, it was actually a three year program. So in this context, that was sort of a one-time It was a one-time thing, they right, right. And in fact, that. now we're actively <laughs> asking people not to contribute to the Frag Mining Fund, but specifically to the Water Bodies Fund, so that those funds can be used for um, whatever purpose. Uh, eventually, the Frag Mining expenses, once that gets drawn down, will just be part of the Water Bodies Fund as everything else. Uh, another question, you, you, uh, you mentioned uh, Unexpected invasive mollusks or whatever. Uh, is there is there any uh, budget or, or effort, uh, educational effort with it? Because boats come and go, the stuff comes and goes with it. Uh, are there efforts to uh, avoid having unexpected? You should come to our meetings. <laughs> <laughs> that is our that is our big. You know, a lot of our purpose of the spy pond committee is to 
both try to do what we can to resolve problems, but also to, to spread information about how to do it. And we're active at, at Town Day, we're active in Echo Fest, um, we're active in um, whenever we do a volunteer, like taking care of the trails day. A lot of that is to keep people aware that water bodies, if you don't take care of them, go south real quick. And that's the whole purpose of the Conservation Commission. You know, but you bring your canoe in the lake you might be doing something. Yeah. That's right, that's right. And so uh, we do our best and, and hope for To expand on that, um, every year for a number of years we've had what we call the anti fertilizing dryer that is distributed to every single household in the Spy Pond watershed, which is 748 48 acres. And it goes out through uh, the neighborhood newsletter, which covers from Spy Pond to Island and Mass Avenue to Route 2. And then the students, met, we used to do, do all the distribution ourselves, but uh, the students from workplace now distribute the rest of the watershed, which is a big donation. And that's going out in the next couple of weeks. Okay, are there any other questions for the committee? Okay, just a clarification. Uh, where did you say you put all these water chestnuts in on the Lexington Parkwell map? Is the assessor here? Oh. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, the next, the next, uh, the second water meeting is actually 17. Uh, it's about 15 minutes early, so other people might come. Uh, I'll tell you what, why don't, uh, why don't we discuss the article we just heard on appropriations for water bodies fund? Uh, uh, Heard the discussion last year was an appropriation of 50. Uh, this year they would like uh, the same appropriation. Uh, what is the uh, rule of the committee? Move 50,000. I'm sorry? Move 50,000. Okay, so do I have a second? Second. 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 Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, Charlie, then it's fine. Yeah, I would like to uh, request that uh, they report. Uh, provide this. If we're going to be carrying money over, that they actually project the balances as opposed to projecting spending something. Yes. What we're doing is we're sitting here. Um, there's an implied balance here of $25,000, $30,000. It's not explicit. I mean, it ought to be, they, they can get approved for somebody to show them how to make a spreadsheet. We can show that. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I find it also confusing. I'm trying to, I, I was staring at this other fund on the other side, trying to figure out that too. Uh, 
Anybody? Just as far as what's being carried over and projections on that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think the. Yes. I'm not exactly. to get too yeah. detailed, but I think part of the challenge is if you look on this page with the three columns where she attempted to roll the fund balance in the middle column, did she put the entire appropriation of 66000 in there, which sort of starts the confusion, right? Because they said there has been 60, but they're showing a pro forma of 66. So that fund balance at the end there is actually 15, and then like Charlie said, it's going to go up for a couple of years and then come down, but they're not really sure. Uh, so we have 9,190 coming out of 14. Well, we, no, that's the trick though. They're going to have 15,000 coming out of 14. Because the pro forma they're giving is showing them spending 66,000. She said she's going to be 6,000. Light of that, it's been sixty. Thus, the balance is fifteen thousand. Yeah. She actually said she, you know, that, uh, yeah, yeah it'd be right. 20, ten to twelve thousand being spent. Correct, six thousand last month. Would somebody be willing to work with Teresa to develop a more understandable spreadsheet? Uh -huh. Dean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if if people. Have, uh, I don't teach you to raise your hand, no. Uh, if people have some specific questions or, or recommendations, could you let Dean know and then he could talk to Teresa? This could be, this could flow a little bit better from one year to the other as far as Dean understand. Because I, you know, quite few, I've got to go through this whole thing again and try to figure it out. So anybody has any recommendations or thoughts, please talk to Dean and then uh, we'll have, we'll be better off next year. Uh, okay, it's made and seconded for 50. Uh, Christine? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just so the, the projected spending is, is going down, and the average spending over the next three years is actually 40,000, not 50,000. So I'm just wondering if, if we're not matching exactly to the expense, why do we need 50,000 to build up an even larger, I mean, maybe, maybe the objective is to build up a larger reserve fund, but we should just be aware that we're doing it. We're building up a $30,000 reserve fund rather than just matching what their, what their annual spending is. Well, of course, you know, 12, at least in 15, 16, 12 of that is all being rolled over to 17, uh, which if this was a budget, they couldn't do it because it's a Warren article, they could accumulate that. Uh, so I think they're trying to level it as best they can. But This one makes it cash expenditures and accruing a surplus. Yeah, I mean, from a, from a history perspective, and I think we probably should like, sort of have a sidebar comment. When they, when they came to us a few years ago, there were, there were a couple problems we had. And the first one was that the spending was, I don't know about volatile, it's not huge amounts, but if you look at the expenditures from nine forward, one year they spent, you know, their expenditures were 6,000, then 41,000, then 5,000, then 20, then 45. So it, it went up and down. And that was sort of the first issue. And then the second issue we would have is because the issues, because the issue could, like they said, because the issue could pop up in the spring or in the fall before or after a budget, we were spending a heck of a lot of money and not getting great outcomes for all of the money we were spending. And so what we had said to them in the past, what we said to them at one point was we need to sort of smooth out, A, smooth out the expenditure and B, get better outcomes for the money we're spending because it becomes a problem if, you know, the example I'd give somebody, i give you is, everyone is, town meeting passes the article in May, town meeting in Germans, and they find a problem on August 1st that needs to be treated immediately, they don't have the money to treat it. They have to wait in the entire year until town meeting passes in May and it gets funded July 1 to deal with it. Don't By the time they, fund? pardon me? Don't we have a reserve fund? The warrant article. So usually they would wait until the fall of our reserve fund. This, we this, have our this is money going into a fund, you know. No, I know it is. But, and so what we had said to them was if we put the money into the fund and just rolled the balance forward, then we'd have the smoothing out. And then if they ran into a problem, they could deal with the problem in the year that in the moment they dealt, they found it, rather than waiting six months. That's the whole idea. So it, it, I mean, it's logical on what we've met, what we've done. I think we're, they're trying to be consistent with the directive we had given them in prior years. Yeah. 
it just is a little confusing how it shows up. Okay, Christine? Uh, I'd like to propose a, 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 an amendment. Uh, I would be more comfortable giving them uh, 40000 rather than 50000 this year. Uh, as Len was pointing out, it, it seems like if you look at what they're actually um, estimating will spend, and then you subtract out what they're going to be carrying over. And I know that every year they carry over substantial amounts of money. Um, it seems like they don't really need 50000 this year. And I, I'm, frankly, I'm, I'm troubled with having this whole concept of having a separate fund for this, because I know the DPW enters into contracts all the time, uh, every year, to do raking and mowing and, and tree planting and all that. And I, I don't understand why we have to have a separate fund. If we're going to have a separate fund, I think we should appropriate an amount that is more in line with their actual expenses, um, taking into consideration for the carrying over. Okay. Uh I had a couple of hands down the uh, back. Alan, did you, or Brian? Well, I, yeah, I guess I, I was uh, just doing this a really good thing. If you look at the five years of expenditures, uh, it's averaging about 45000 a year, uh, you know, it, including the $12,000 that's accumulated. Um, I, I, I agree, as, as Dean said, that it makes sense to uh, try to level out the expense over the years and, and, and keep retained earnings. So I think the only question is, over the long run, what's the likely expenditure? 45,000 a year average, 50,000 a year average, <coughs> 55,000 a year average, but for the reasons Dean said, I think we, we don't want to just uh, budget what they predict they're going to expend next year, because that doesn't leave, one of doesn't leave any room for accumulation, which means we have a very uneven appropriation. Uh, and also doesn't leave any reserve for emergencies of you know, mollusks show up in the uh, spot or something. So whether it's 45,000 a year or 50,000 a year, I think we should maintain the even you know, level funding from year to year and let them, and specifically let them accumulate some money for emergencies, their own reserve fund that they can spend with a vote of their committee pretty quickly. Okay, John? Well, I think, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, Brian, did you? Yeah, oh, well, and actually, um, <coughs> on and Dean's point, um, since they're not spending the money for the sonar, except for once every three years, they're not, they're starting in 2015, they're going to be appropriating for 2017. There's all really only a one year gap where they're really not covered for an emergency because they're going to have that $12,000 in their fund available for you. So if something happens two years from now, they're going to have $24,000 right. sitting there already used. And if something happened, then they could come back in the following year. So there's really only a one year gap, and this is the year, and then there's already $15,000 in there. So as far as an emergency basis, I don't think we really need to worry about it, except for potentially this year. Jerry? Okay, Charlie? Uh, I, I think I was about to agree with both Christine and, and Brian. Um, the, the total amount of money that they're forecasting that they're going to spend in fiscal years uh, 15, 16, and 17 is, um, is about $112,000. And that includes this uh, $6,300 that they say is going to be left over from this year. And actually, if they don't spend that, that's uh, it's $106,000. But what they've requested in this forecast is $121,000. So in principle, we could, we could plan on less money in fiscal year 15, but more money in fiscal, you know, in other words, actually level it out as opposed to having it decline. And, and the, the balance, as, uh, as Brian says, they, they're gonna, there's going to be a reserve in there. So are you thinking 40,000 a year for three years? Uh, 45? I would say 45. But, uh. 
Okay, Peter? I, I think we should remember that this is a group of volunteers that are putting a lot of their own effort into this. It's true that uh, they're supported by DPW, um, and it's also true that, that the spreadsheets are not very useful for, as they're personally set up, for looking into the future. You, you, you guys are doing mental arithmetic here on the fly. <coughs> I suggest that, that, that we tell them that we're concerned about the projections and the uh, building up a fund which is uh, un unnecessarily large and uh, suggest that they next year that that they deal with that issue but not do it this year on, on, on the fly okay so I, I've got a record that we've got a motion for 50,000 uh, well Chris, yeah. uh, for 50,000 I think maybe seconded Christine are you making a motion for a different sum yes 40. okay is there a second to that second okay uh, <coughs> Would the, th would the thought be that leaving it at 40 and the next year 40 and then, you know, in other words, a steady out at that rather than having it drop? Just trying to get a sense of what your thoughts are. Well, I, I, I'm reluctant to commit to next year yeah. um, because I, I want to see what, what, what the 15 shows, but I think 40 is more in line going forward and 50 is, um, I, and, I'm, I'm, and frankly, I'm, I'm, I would be fine with 40 for the next three years if uh, there was an effort to encompass all of the water bodies in town as well. But okay. I'd, I'd be comfortable with 40 for the next three years. Okay, so we have a main motion for 50 seconded a substitute motion for 40,000 that's been seconded. Any further discussion? What, which uh, one? John? I, I come down on the Christine's side as well because generally speaking, the reserve fund, our reserve fund is there for contingencies. Mm -hmm. And I, I just generally have a problem with individual reserve funds everywhere, more or less in the town. So they ought to be reduced as much as possible in my opinion. If they need the money, it's easy to come to us to get the money. Joe? Oh, I was just, how, what motion would we vote on? Well, I want to see if there's any further oh, discussion no. first, and then we'll, uh, then we'll do that. Tom? So if there is an emergency, what, is, what do they have for a fund that's built up before they come to us in town meeting? People, only because I'm saying this, I know very little, and I know something about water chestnuts, because I was involved a little bit with it. Um, Mystic Lakes, and I know something about treatments, all that, and things can happen overnight with these water chestnuts and a few allergies that all of a sudden appear. And if they're not taken care of right away because they're searching for money, it becomes to be double the money the next time they come. Charlie, uh, to answer your question, Tom, if, if, if we voted $50,000, okay, they would have 6,300, 2,500, and 12,000. Uh, so that would be a total of uh, 20, $28,000 unexpended at the end of fiscal year 15. Okay. In other words, that's, the, that's money that's sort of floating in a reserve fund. Based on what she said tonight, that they would only spend 10, of the 18,000, they're only gonna spend 10 to 12. So that would leave 6,300, and then um, 50,000 is 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 2,500 higher than the 47.5 they have here, and they're not going to spend 12,000 of that. We know that. So that's $28,000. About 28 or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. That's, 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 yeah. that's fine. I didn't hear that clear. Okay. Any other uh, decisions? Alan, Grant, Dean. Just a technical question. It, it, would they be permitted to request funds from the reserve fund in an emergency, given it's a war order? Yeah, I don't see why not. And, you know, we're, we're, we have it set up for even when the Finance Committee is not meeting, so uh, they can. Grant? 
No, that is the question. Um, we were just um, making the recommendation, right? I mean, town meeting can vote 50,000 no matter what we say. Yeah, I mean, we are, we, we only have the authority to recommend. Town meeting could do what they wish. It's not like it's, not like it's a budget item, it's a water article. And that's, that's the difference. And so, um, it, it almost seems like a meeting to have a meeting. You know, I mean, this is sort of an emergency fund all, all its own, set up to take care of what are now routine emergency you know, stuff that is made. So, you know, I'm okay with uh, recommending less, but uh, I don't know that it's going to matter, right? Because every year they've gotten 50,000. So, but we've always recommended 50,000. Well, just for the last two years. Uh Last year was 50, and 12 was 20, 15, 15. So actually, it's only been that high the last two years. So to build in yet more emergency into what an existing emergency, we already have a way of handling emergencies. This is just to sort of ease the process of requesting for an emergency. Um, I understand the technical part. So I'm uh, willing to support less money. OK, Dean? Um, so I'm, I'm doing my little homework projection here. Um, 40,000 actually comes out to be the exact number they need. I don't know if Christine is quicker than I am on this, but um, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the warrant article asks, the warrant article asks for 50. If you go to their sheet though, they only ask for 47.5. Right. So the 50 needs to come down to 47.5. And then their sheet and their projection says they're gonna spend the 66. But then they came here tonight and said they were only going to spend a 60. So then the 47.5 comes out to 41.5. We round it out to 40 and we call it a day. <laughs> I mean, it actually comes out to the exact number. So I agree with the 40. It makes sense. And then just projecting out the fund balance, just like Charlie said, even if you do it, you still end up with about 20,000 in the balance next year, 34 the year after, and then the 17, it's down to like nine. So. You know, if we do that, though, we have to look at spending forty thousand next year, not the thirty-seven thousand that they. In other words, you can't right. drop the forty-seven to forty, and then not expect that those numbers in the next couple of years have to go up. Yeah, you can't hold them to the spreadsheet right. for next year or for for the year after. Okay, uh, we have another uh, hearing there. Uh, they are going to take it in reverse order. So the recommendation that would be voted on first, or the motion will be made, voting on first, is for 40,000. OK? Which oh, one? I'm sorry? Which one we're voting? 40,000. 40, 45. Right. 40. We're voting for the 40,000. If that is defeated, then we'll go back to the main motion of 50. Right. All those in favor of uh, $40,000, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. All those in favor of forty thousand dollars, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the motion carries for forty thousand dollar appropriation under Article thirty nine by a vote of 13 to 6. Okay. Uh, that was the substitute motion, the main uh, substitute for the main motion. All those in favor of 40,000, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Yes. Uh, Okay, Gloria, do we have the people on the uh, second meters here? Okay, great. Uh, okay, this is Warren Article 30 of 17. Okay, Article 17, uh, the bylaw amendment, second water meters. Uh, 
this will be a selectman's main motion, uh, but because obviously it could have a financial impact that finance committee might decide to uh, make a, a recommendation on that. So uh, third of four is yours. Can you please tell us uh, what this is and why? Yeah, my name is Gary Tibbetts, I'm precinct five town meeting member. And uh, the main purpose of my article is to encourage water conservation uh, and to make the MWRA charges to, to the island and water users more equitable than they are now. And to bring them in line with the surrounding towns. Uh, the systems within in-ground uh, water systems with automatic climbers, rainways, and town inspected backflows prove to conserve millions of gallons of water and protect our water supply. I think we can all agree that's a good idea. The properties in town that would likely utilize a second meter installed at their own cost and permitted and inspected by the town for a fee would save water as well as a few dollars on the soil usage fees. As many of the properties that might take advantage of this option are large ones that pay a larger MWRA assessment on their tax bill, it would make our billing more equitable. Since I was told by Michael Rodemaker and Adam Chaplain that water coming into town is needed, as well as sewage going out of town, I feel it's sort of against Mass General Law for the town to build sewage under the irrigation that is not using it, and the town is not paying for it, and thus charging more for the sewage than across the town which I think would be against the law. It seems to me that while we should bring Arlington in line with the surrounding town in the second meeting, it's only a matter of time before someone brings cost of litigation against the town and forces its hand, so why not step up now and do the right thing and conserve some water and safe at the same time? Um, you know, most of the towns around here, Cambridge, Belmont, Lexington, Waltham, <coughs> Boston, Wellesley, Concord, Brookline, Bedford, all allow the second meter. And um, one of the main reasons I, this, I, this came to my mind to bring this up is I live near the Thompson School. And in the um, park next to it, there's a water park. That thing would run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in rain and cold and everything else. I called the rec department. They said there was nothing they could do about it. So when it came time, they're going to be rebuilding that park this year. I went to the meetings involved in that, as did a lot of my neighbors. Because you, you'd walk the dog at 1 o'clock in the morning, they'd all been blasting all over the place. It just didn't make sense. And all it would have taken was a simple rain delay, which you use in the landscape irrigation system, that would have stopped that from happening at a time. So the planners that are doing it, the company that's planning it for the town, has agreed that they will put them in there. And uh, Mr. Rodemaker and Adam Champlain both told me they would make sure that they are in that system there. But that brought it to my attention how much water is being wasted. You know, you see people turn on a sprinkler on the end of a hose and it's running down the street three hours later. So I think we have to encourage and reward people that are willing to use a system that will save water. We're not going to get any more of it. We're running out of it. So that's about it. Uh, questions, uh, Joe. Uh, with, with the pool at down by the Thompson, when you called and, and they said they can't turn off the water. It's been, it was like that way for two or three years. But I mean, did, they must have had a, a, a. There's a rule that says they can't turn it off. But did you ask? Them? I don't know if it's rule because it makes sense for it to be running at no, eleven o'clock at night when it's raining. It doesn't. No, it makes no sense. I mean, just turn off. The, they couldn't do that. They used to years before that box was put in. A, you know. A, Public works guy would come down and turn the valve off underground. Yeah. When that system was put in, there was nothing allowed for it. And some of it was faulty, some of it was the kids would jam it. Occasionally I'd walk over and unjam one of them, but a couple of them you, you couldn't get to unjam. They'd just, they'd just be running. How would it never flooded the school with me on there? Yeah. Um, I can understand how. How tires and then the rain sensor would, would uh, reduce water usage. They said the second meter would only be allowed if it was connected to a system that had timers in it. So you couldn't just put a, a, a hose faucet out there on a second meter and run your sprinklers on as you do. Exactly. It would encourage proper use of the water. Would it would encourage or require? Would it require you to have a timer? It would you, in order to have the second meter, you'd have to have the timer and the backflow and the, and the rain. And is there any enforcement of that so that somebody could just let the sprinklers run all night in the second year? 
you, yeah, conceivably you could. I don't, I don't know why you would, but you know, conceivably, sure. Because that's how making the water less expensive is almost encouraging. It seems to be encouraging more use. It'd be so no, well, it would still be costing. It'd still be costing the money, and there'd be no anybody with half a brain wouldn't do that. You know why would you? Because you, you'd end up flooding your own cellar or something. Well, the same reason they water in the, in the rain because they're lazy. <laughs> well, uh, people water in the rain with systems because they don't have rain delays and they don't think to run downstairs and shut the timer off or up the garage and shut the timer off. If you have the rain delay, it takes all the thinking out of it. It just does it. Okay, so the inspector would not approve the second meter unless you have a permanently installed rain detector. And the system would also have a backflow, which yeah. legally you should have, which protects stuff from backing up into the water supply. Okay, John. Uh, Mr. Davis, could you please explain to me about the rain delay? I don't understand what The rain is. delay is a simple device that usually mounted up near one of your gutters. It's basically it's cardboard washes. And when the rain gets them wet, they expand, it opens a switch and shuts the whole system down and won't let it turn back on until they've dried out a couple of days later. So if it rains Monday, your system probably won't work again until Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when that indicated that it's, it's time. Okay, Dick. So you get two meters, and so you have two different bills? You get one bill, and some towns do it, some use a second meter that they bill you just water line. Other towns use the second meter as a takeoff meter. So you get bill on the one and it subtracts the sewage for the second one. If you do it, it, it amounts to the same thing. Okay, Charlie? So, I, have a, uh, I don't quite understand the, well, the way the billing mechanism works, but you said that this is going to save water. It will save water for people who, who leave the water running at night or leave the water running on a rain. Or it'll, it'll conserve water. It'll conserve water. Conserve water. Yeah. But um, it's not going it, to, it's going to drive the cost of sewage up, right? The because cost of sewage is going to stay the same. It's just. No, it's going to be better. It won't be spread over fewer. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, the overall cost. Is how, how is that going to cost? <coughs> The overall cost of the town is going to stay the, of the sewage to the town is going to stay the same. It's just the people actually using the sewage are going to pay for their fair share, and the people that aren't using it are not going to pay for what they're not using. Right now, if you if you water your lawn with an in-ground system, you pay the sewage on it, even, even though that water never sees the soil pipe, and that's really not fair. Do they, uh, obviously, okay, I just want to follow up on that, though. Do they monitor, obviously, the town is metered. It says as well as the sewage going out of the town. So is the flow going out of the town? That's, what I, that's what I was told. Yeah. I'm not a rock maker in town of Jackson. And what about the, uh, what about the storm? The water, is that also monitored? That I don't know. Because oh, I don't think a, a lot of the storm water, I don't believe, goes to the NWRA. No. Well, it does, but it just goes out. Yes, it's different. Storm system is not monitored. Do we get bills or something? No. I mean, if the storm water just goes down the drains in the Elwhite Brook or Millbrook or wherever. Mystic Lake. Mystic Lake. I think some of it even goes into spot. I mean, because the young stuff that goes into spot. It'll be monitored. But if they're actually monitoring sewage going out, and you're not, well, actually, it should be the same. So. You have an estimate of how much water is used in irrigation versus not? I, I don't. It's, it, I, I, you know, I don't know how many houses have irrigation. I don't know how many houses would decide to get it and utilize it. You know, that I, I, I wish I could give you a figure on that, but I'd be lying to you. Does this only work for irrigation or will it work for somebody who's going to run out of the hose? No, this would be set up just for the in ground system. It would only, you know, work on the on the landscape and the garden area of the of the yard. It would not be for washing a car or anything like that. Okay. 
Okay, Peter, I'll go right down the line. Peter, Gwen, Alan. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Uh, Peter first. <clears throat> I understand there's a substantial amount of water that uh, goes into the sewer pipes um, from various sources. So the people that are paying only for fresh water and not for sewage would not carry their share of that cost. No, they would still, they would still be paying for sewage for the water that comes into their house and then goes out through the sewer lines. <clears throat> they would only not pay for the water that goes out on their garden and their trees and their shrubs. They would not be paying for the, their share of the from whatever sources if, if in, in the water that they use for watering. If these systems are set up properly, they water the lawn, not the street, they water the trees, the, the vegetable garden stuff, and it, it goes in the ground, not in the sources. I'm, I understand that a substantial amount of water infiltrates the sewer systems uh, from whatever sources. From rain, from, well, from rain, sure. not not just from. But that goes into the sewer water. system, and that's that's not. So who of, pays for the water that goes into the sewer system? I don't believe the top, anybody pays for the water in the. It goes the into the sewer system. system. It's metered. It's got to be no, spread out. The the sewage is metered. The storm water drains are not. I'm not talking about storm water drains. I'm talking about rain water that infiltrates into the sewers. <clears throat> the sewer pipes are not perfect, just like the water supply pipes aren't perfect. Um, I'm sure they're not, but that's not the person's fault that's trying to do the right thing, you know, watering their garden the proper way. You know, if, if the pipes underground are leaking and stuff, I think that's our, the town responsibility to deal with that. And I, I don't think they so much take water in as they leak water out. Mary? Mary? Me? Yeah. Um, we installed it in our second home. Our sewer well, bill went sky high, and uh, so we installed a second water system, and it cut it down tremendously. That's in another town, right? Home. Oh. Yeah. When? Um, so the, the new rate structure that the town imposed switched to quarterly billing, billing which will allow them as a second phase to do the bills based only on winter usage mm -hmm. as a different way of getting at the summer usage of water. Is, is that, do you know if that is still their plan to do? Or you're saying your plan is a better plan or? I, I feel what I'm proposing is a better and fairer, more equitable way of doing it. And it's, it's the way, as I said, most all towns that surround us which is I get more involved in politics here, Arlington seems to want to be compatible with all the towns around it. I saw the wage reports and stuff, and I, these are all the towns that, you know, you were comparing the firefighter and police wages to and everything. They're all doing it this way and have done it this way for a number of years, so I believe it's the fairer way to do it. And just a quick follow-up, who would pay the cost of installing and attaching the meter to the That system? would all be burnt, borne by the, the homeowner. And, and if that's the way it is, you know, they purchase the meter, uh, all the labor to put it in, and all that. Great, thank you. Do you have a, uh, a list? I mean, could you run down a list of communities that actually sure. do this? Yeah. Um, Cambridge, Belmont, yeah. Lexington. Oh, we'll start. Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I should have put it on that list. Cambridge, Belmont, Lexington, Waltham, Stonia, uh, Watertown. Boston, Wellesley, Brookline, Concord, Bedford. And there are others, but those are just. Oh, you can add Hope. And Hope, yes. Bedford, yeah. Bedford or Bedford? Oh, that's dead. Bedford. Okay. Uh, I, I, I listed those towns mainly because the other night when I was at the, um, one of the meetings with the payroll comparisons, those were the towns that we compared ourselves. Okay, uh, Alan? Um, I remember this came up the last time when, when this article came up. Uh, we had some questions about the, the, not only the cost of the meter and the hardware, but the changes to the collection system, the wireless collection system, changes to the billing system, uh, and, you know, requires some reprogramming or something like that. Um, 
do you do you know what the, all of those infrastructure changes would cost, and what and, and then <coughs> estimating how many people would do this? What, what would, the, would the permit be a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, or five thousand dollars? To install a meter in all the hardware that goes with it, it's about a thousand dollars, and that would be borne by the the household that it's doing. What about the additional cost of the town? As far as the additional cost, I'm sure that it would. Um, as far as reading it, it's all read electronically now. So I'm sure there'd have to be some adjustment made in the program that reads them. But I would think that would be a one-time thing. I can't imagine it's all that expensive to do that. Well, simplistically, it might be two of those. Right? You, 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 you would. The, so the cities that do this, that read them electronically, have to. Right. And, and, and going back to the treasurer's office, the cost of updating the, the building software and all those things, I'm sure whether it's 10000 or 50000 the cost. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. It's a, it's a one-time thing, and I I you have to be honest. I don't know. I, I, th I think the town meeting would want to know. I, I'll try to find that out. Would would a thousand households do this? <coughs> a thousand households do it. Would it be two thousand dollars per permit or whatever? This yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about it, every time they build one of these new uh, two-unit condos, which they're putting up all over East Arlington, they're adding at least one water meter. And they're doing this, and that doesn't seem to be costing a fortune. So I, I will, I could find out what one of those costs would be. One, I guess I mean, that would give us adding, the idea. adding additional meters with the same rate is just sort of arithmetic. Adding a second system with a different rate and the arithmetic to put them yeah. together, whatever. Probably, yeah. I, I think it would be more. Yeah, I, I, but I'm sure it'd be a one-time thing that you know a programmer would have to do that. And, uh, but I, I would have to be budgeted but, somehow into the treasurer's budget or whatever. Yeah, it's a it's a great question, and I'll try to get an I'm answer. Sure yeah. Okay. okay, I'm just going right around the table. Uh, Grant? Um, other towns have done this, and that's good to know that you look at your own towns have done it. You might be getting the idea if people ask some questions about this and quantitative. Um, how much, or how much water do you say? How much water did other towns? I mean, it's not this is the expense side, but it's that. I mean, you got to balance it. Well, how much is this really going to save? It? It's going to be an estimate at the same time. A anything yeah. I tell you is going to be an estimate, but there is going to be. We're, we're all about estimates. Yeah, but just in, in my own house, when I did this years ago, I cut my own water bill in half because I started watering properly. So it, it's, it's definitely, there's a lot of water to be saved. So, but nobody knows because I don't think the town even has a list of who <coughs> has in ground systems. I, I don't know how many it involves, so how many gallons exactly, I don't know. But I would say the average home could save about 30 or 40 percent. Well, and there are those, those that would water their lawn. Right. Um, and there are all homes in our there's a certain set of those who water their lawn. Right. And of those certain set, those might realize the savings that you did. Yep. Or more or less. Right, and, and, and not everybody is going to opt for this. I mean, it is going to be, it's going to cost them about a thousand dollars up front. So, okay, well, so, it's, so if there's anything here, I'm mean, not sure how this impacts, I, how I can vote on anything. Right. I don't know what the impact Well, I don't know how much there is. For the, you know, I know, I know. Nobody, I could give, the nobody could really give you, I, this is something you have to see, but again, I think it's something that the town is almost obligated to do because it doesn't seem fair that the town is charging a fee that they're not paying. And, and the other towns that have already done it. Mm -hmm. Those wouldn't be estimates, they might be some, I don't know, some sort of facts about if they save any water. I know it's kind of hard to know. But if, if you know what they use one year and what they use the next year. I, I, can, I can get figures for what the average house would say. Well, anything yeah. might, might be more helpful yeah. than I'll try to close it. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, uh, Paul? Uh, does your company install these? No, we don't. I knew somebody was going to ask me that. <laughs> we recommend it, but we don't install. <laughs> okay, uh, Joe? What, name a couple of the companies that are qualified to do this. In, in uh, Auto Water in Arlington, yeah. he's a licensed plumber what and it's from Auto Water. Okay. Uh, Jeff Boyle. Okay. Uh, there's a um, uh, Boyle Irrigation is another one. Um, uh, 
Mox Contracting. Uh, there's, there's several companies that, that do it. You now, know. a follow-up. What about the high-rise condos? Uh, are they on board? I would think they would, they would be done. They would have done this two years ago. Yes, and some of the high-rise condos, when they were built, they had second meters okay. put in yeah. in anticipation of being able to use them, and they've never used them. <coughs> the Kentwood has one, and it's never been used. It's never been utilized. Okay. For instance. Okay. Uh, <coughs> two years ago, this came up. Uh, Joe. Uh, Terrible. Yeah. And the biggest argument with the town meeting was that somebody could bypass this and bring, be using that water for their own system. And there was no way to... Anything is possible. Yeah. I mean, people have been known to play yeah. around with the current meters, let's face yeah. it. It's, you know, if you're going to steal, you're going to mm. steal. It's hard to catch people stealing, so... Well, you could probably do it just by looking at the past the history of their water consumption, and you can probably figure it out pretty quick. Yeah. And plus, we can put a penalty in uh, in the bylaws. Yeah. Well, that, that's how they, years ago, my father used to tell a story, I guess, years ago, the gas meters used to put a, a quarter in, and it gave you a certain amount of gas. And they caught a guy in Cambridge who was making quarters out of ice, putting them in the thing, and they'd melt. <laughs> but then they figured out that that neighborhood was using more gas, and they narrowed it down to him. So I th I'm sure there are ways to make it, make people honest. But that was a big objection to you. Yeah, 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 I agree. Tom? Yeah, so if Article 17 passes, and I have a sprinkler system, and, and I get a backflow and everything goes with it, I will be it would cost me an additional thousand dollars to get a meter hooked up and everything. Give or take in that, in that. I've talked to two or three of the plumbers, but you have to be, as you know, you have to be so, a licensed plumber to so install the meter. With, how about the people that just can't, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. Right. How about the people that can't afford the thousand dollars? Well, this is will, will they be fined? No, it's, it's, this is just voluntary. This is voluntary. This is voluntary. voluntary. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not All mandatory. Right. Just okay. Voluntary. All right. If, if okay. you want the second meeting, you right. have to follow voluntary. the guidance. Okay. All right. It, it's the automatic timer that conserves water. It's not the second meter that conserves water. Exactly. In fact, it's the opposite of the second meter. It, it, it encourages people to use as much water as they, that, that, than, they, well, well, than they would have because they are going to be paying less. The second meter, the savings on that, would encourage them to use the times in the rain delays to save water. In other words, we'd be, just like the government rewards people with all sorts of tax incentives, we would be rewarding them for conserving water. So you want, so you're, you're, you want to, you're, so you reward, the, the idea of this warrant article is to reward property owners who can afford to put in automatic timers to do so. Well, it's, it's, any, it's anybody, and as I said, the, the other thing, it makes things more equitable. A lot of the more expensive homes in Arlington are paying a higher proportion of the MWRA charges with that assessment that's on your tax bill. So, you know, if you get a house that's, you know, uh, assessed at 700000 he's paying a higher rate for the MWRA than a person that's assessed for 250000 So it makes things a little bit more equitable. Well, if I... I don't have an automatic sprinkler and I never will. Right. So, but you will. So aren't I subsidizing you? No, we're still both paying the same amount for our water and we're paying the same amount for the sewage that we use. But you don't pay I for the I just would sewage. not be using the extra sewage on, on my lawn that you might be using if you go out and water your lawn with, uh, if you did, you know, you're not going to water your lawn, so you, we're both paying the same price for our water. You're not subsidizing my water at all, and I'm just not paying for sewage that I'm not using and the town is not paying for. The, the, uh, some, at least some of these towns who you've mentioned, they prove uh, that they charge a higher water rate for irrigation. Does not Winchester? No, I believe they all charge the, I, I don't know exactly, I'm not going to lie to you, but as far as I know, all the towns charge the same water rate, not not at each town comparably, but they charge everybody the same water rate and the sewer, same sewage rate. So we, we're just asking to not pay the sewage rate on the water that's not going into the sewer. 
Okay, Carolyn? Carolyn. You want to say, oh, Carolyn, did you want to? Um, well, yeah, so. I okay, have your hand. Um, <coughs> basically, just to follow up on her, so basically, if you can, if you have property that's in the yard and you can afford to install this, you're going to save money on your water bill because you're going to conserve water. Mm -hmm. So you have an incentive to put it in for all of those reasons. You're asking the town to offer them a tax incentive on top of the incentive that they already have from their own actions. No, I'm asking the town to not charge them for the sewage that they're not using. So then it is the same as the Carabello one from two years ago, with just a lot of extra info. It's, it's tighter, but I mean, it's the same theory. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it, it is what it is. It, it's, but the, the town currently is charging a lot more for a service than what it's costing them to rent. And I, I don't think that flies anymore. So, I, you know, I, I, you know, if we do the right thing, we can encourage some water conservation, get the town in compliance with the law and with the way the rest of the, the area, the surrounding communities are working and have worked for many years. And so there's more communities on this list than there were a couple of years ago. Well, I did a lot of research. So that, well, it might be that you wanted the longest question. No, most most of those towns that I've been doing this my work 35 years and dealing around this stuff for a long time, and most of those towns have been like that all along. Okay, well, uh, there's several people that have their hands up in the audience. What I want to do is finish all the questions from the finance committee, and then anybody who would like to speak, uh, be welcome to speak on this. Charlie. So uh, you mentioned that you were concerned that the town might be doing something illegal because they're charging people for sewage costs that they're not using. Right. Okay. So, but you, I want to water my lawn with my hose. So why can't I benefit from this? The, the, the whole purpose of this, when most of the time, and I'm not saying you, most of the time, people at the hand water or use untimed and unzoned systems. They come home from work, the lawn looks dry, the tomatoes look dry, they turn the hose on, they light the grill, they start going, the next thing it's nine o'clock and there's water running down the street. I've seen it a million times, I used to do it. So this is to encourage the <coughs> water conservation and that's. But I think if I could save on sewage charges, mm -hmm. I would certainly use a second I mean, the principle that you that you outlined here, that, that it's, uh, I'll, I'll use the term unfair or potentially illegal, to charge somebody for sewage use when they're not using it, is true, whether the water is running down the street or whether it's going into the lawn and being saturated by the, by the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're basically saying that only people who install an expensive in-ground system can benefit from this bylaw. And, well, and I think that that's prejudicial to a whole bunch of people who hand water their gardens. Uh, that, that, that's your opinion and you're, you're entitled to it. I, 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 I just know for sure that these systems save a lot of water. And the whole idea in my warrant article is to conserve water. I, mean, I don't know if you've you know, seen pictures on uh, the History Channel and stuff of some of those lakes down south that are dried up. You see boats tied up to docks that are you know, 800 feet in the dry. I mean, water is running out. We've got to save it. And this is, you know, one way I only can help do that. Okay, there's uh, several other, and, and, and was, uh, I'm looking for information at this point. Uh, Mr. Gilligan, I think you had your hand up. Did you want to add something to this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Stephen Gilligan, I'm the town treasurer. I, I, I wanted to get in here at the start of the discussion, but I couldn't have the selection speech. Um, I understand there may have been some questions. Uh, that were asked of the treasurer's office with respect to impact of billing and cost. And if there are questions anyone would like to ask, I'll be happy to answer them. Let me just say a couple of, of, of things that might help clarify the situation. This discussion has been around for 25 years. Right. The discussion was around when I served on the board of selectmen. And the key issue at that time was <coughs> pilfer, fraud, whatever you want to call it. Using the second meter to backfeed the kitchen windows if you do your dishes and not pay the sewer charge. Right now, the, department, uh, the water department, under the director of, of public works, is implementing a new three-tiered rate structure for water and sewer. 
part of that process is to, is to include baseline, which is to look at how each uh, water meter is tracking for water and sewer usage. And that baseline will carry reports. And it's going to be structured such that it's going to look at dry months, wet months, winter months, summer months. So that uh, indices can be created that says, all right, who's using the water, who's using because the kids are coming home from college, and how can the rates be structured? With, keep the following in mind, it could be established that a second water meter paid for by the user could be spread over time to mitigate a large cost up front, the answer is the Capabaro's concern. That's borne by the water user. With respect to conservation, I can't address any system that goes on automatically or off automatically. But the new rate structure that's three tiered will be able to track how usage is and what each family, one, two, three, four, five numbers, are using for water. And the of the software that does the, uh, that keeps track of the meters, um, what might be the cost be to adding a second meter into the same house uh, as far as software modifications? It's, it's creating a new account. And that's already built into the software. It, it's the same thing as if you were building uh, a, new, a new house on a vacant lot. It's just adding an account to the software. The only symmetry, for lack of a better word, is You've got water meter B at the same at the same physical location. That should not incur uh, additional maintenance or management well, I, software. Steve, I think a specific question that was: you're adding a second price. I'm going to call it price tier. You're adding a yes. second price tier. So oh. it's not the meter itself, right? Because we get, look, we were talking about like with condos, they have meters all the time, right? But they're all in the same price tier. This right. would be adding. Forget the second meter. Correct. This would be putting it in a new price tier. New price tier. Right. It would be a new price tier. My understanding is that this discussion has already been taking place in the water department. And as I talked about baselining, to look at what it would take to put in, I believe it's built into the software to add the second meter and add the component of an additional price to it. That you can ask uh, the director of DPW, and I have no problem doing that in the morning and getting back to the chairman. Uh, but my understanding is that's been taken into account. There will be, I'm not, there will be a labor component in the water department to get them installed. There'll be a labor component in my office to collect the bills. But I think that can be addressed from a cost standpoint. Okay, is there anybody else who like Mr. Harrington? Stephen Harrington, town meeting number precinct 13. I'm not associated with these guys at all. I'm coming here to speak tonight as a homeowner that the current water system billing hurts tremendously. So a family of five, the you mentioned the three-tiered system. If you look at water usage, and you should just Google water usage, you'll see it's pretty well modeled by the number of people in a home. And so, as a family of five, we actually get hurt by this three-tiered system, where the second tier kicks in at about two people, 2.2 people or so, and the third tier gets kicked in for larger families. Larger families also own larger homes, just more bedrooms. And so 
We also get hurt from the MWRA surcharge, which is based on the value of your home, not on the usage of your water. And so I, as a homeowner, get hit twice. Now, I have an irrigation system. I use it very sparingly. I don't have it on automatic. I let my lawn go brown sometimes. I use it when it makes the most sense. I probably used it last year when it was pretty dry, average two days a week. Because I really don't care that much. I like to have it, they put it in. Wasn't, but what the current billing, it's very high. For, I think my, if I include my surcharge, I'm up to $2,000 for water. And we're not unusual water uses. And so <clears throat> when you're forcing people with large homes and the money to do this is to tap into the well of the guy next door. <laughs> and that's what I could do for less money and get myself out of paying the town anything for my outside water usage. And not just anecdotally, this has happened to the town of Arlington. If I'm correct, the Winchester Country Club completely went to a well water and also got off of town sewer. And what that did is when you see these numbers that say that Arlington conserved water, they were the single largest user of water and they stopped using it. And so the economics is going to force people who are, well, you know, frankly, unfairly charged. Someone mentioned earlier about how they'd be subsidizing me because wouldn't be, I wouldn't be paying for their sewer usage if I have an outdoor irrigation system. But in fact, it's quite the other way around. That people with large homes, large families, are actually subsidizing people who don't. And so the economics is just going to be that you'll force guys like me who have the option to tap into a well to use a well and then you get nothing. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let me, let me get the other questions. Anybody else who would like to say anything specifically to this article? Okay. Do you know, Alan, do you want me to, sorry, Mr. Chairman, do you want me to get back to you in the morning with, with the answer about the, the, the new rate tier and the price point? Sure, just uh, email it, well, email it to Gloria, okay, and she can uh, email it to everybody else. With respect to the triple tier, the, the three tier rate structure, uh, the town manager and the director of GPW uh, had recently put in writing that it's their um, expectation that 80% of all water uses in the town will be within the first two rate structures. And then on a personal note, I'm in a family of three, and the way my daughter takes showers, I'll be in the third rate structure. <laughs> so trust me when I say I want to get a handle on costs as quickly as I can. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wants to who would like to speak to this article? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm My name is Phil Downing. Uh, Tell me, member precinct 15. Um, I just uh, I wanted to say uh, I think you should encourage approval of this article because it's a win-win. Okay. We save water and we encourage planting of lawns, shrubs, trees, which will further benefit the environment. Okay. As far as you know. The time device saving water. How many have maybe cut their lawn and put the water on for a half hour on Saturday afternoon? We sat down on the couch to watch the Sox game and woke up <coughs> two hours later and the sprinklers still going out front. That's where the, that's where the, we're wasting water. That that's why the timed device and the uh, water sensor, the rain sensor, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, anybody from the committee with any additional questions or comments? Alan? Uh, just, I, I encourage everybody on the committee to, to look at these towns' water and sewer rates. I was a little bit surprised that, that the sewer rates uh, in Bedford, Lexington, and Brookline are two to three times the water rates uh, uh, for, 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 for the measure, measured against the, the amount of water used that comes into the property. Uh, for example, Belmont is 568 per 100 cubic feet for the water used, and 1125 per 100 cubic feet for the sewer. Uh, Lexington is 655 and 18. So there's a huge difference in the cost of 100 gallons of water, 100 cubic feet of water, depending on which meter it's on. And uh, you know, we have to make some guess about how much water, you know, what percentage will be going through the cheaper meter as opposed to the expensive meter to see what the impact is. Because it may be that if, if Half of the water in the town is going 
through the cheaper meter, the lawns or whatever, that the cost of the other one's going to go way up. So, you know, I just encourage everyone to look at the, at the rates in the towns with the two meters. There's a huge difference between the two meters. Okay. Is there anybody? Uh, Mary? I think the amount of water you use when you have it is less than if you did it by hand. <clears throat> because ours goes on like at 3 o'clock in the morning when the sun isn't up and it's all done before the sun comes up. And if it's raining, it doesn't go. <clears throat> so I think in the long run, you save on the amount of water you use as well as the sewer bill goes down because it doesn't go through the sewer. <clears throat> okay, Jean? Yeah, I, I'm just gonna ask this question just so I can make sure I have my head around this. Um, the hypo, let me give you a, a hypothetical question. I'm sure it's wrong, but it gets my point. So, if we if we install second meters, if we just if they, we, had, we get a second meter, let's say we didn't have all this other stuff back below, blah blah blah. You just have a second meter if you need to your lot, right? So the charge on the second meter is less than the charge on the first meter, right? right. So, but the selectmen have a duty to run an enterprise fund that doesn't go bankrupt. So they would have to raise rates. They're going to have to raise one or both rates. They have to raise the water rate or the sewer rate to go up to balance the fund. Right? Well, they'd have, Anybody to, raise, they'd have to raise the sewer rate and charge what it's actually costing for the sewage that's being used, not spreading it out inequitably amongst everyone. So the people that are not using it would not be paying for it. That, that is a difference. You're absolutely right. But these people are paying for something they're not getting. And you know, the, this and you know, government does a lot of financial things to encourage conservation and stuff. And this is just one small way that Town of Island can, can do something to encourage this conservation. So you you are right. right it, 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 it's the sewer rate. That other, you know, that, you know, and, and the people that are using this and not paying the sewage on the water that's going in their garden, their, their sewage on, on the stuff that's going through their house is going to go up. There, there's going to be an upside there, without a doubt. But it, it makes it equitable then and encourages the conservation. Okay. okay. I think we're sort of going around and around the same point. Bill, I had, well, Bill, Bill, I promise. Just go back to Mr. Foster and a couple other people. If I can prove that the town is charging me a fee, that I am getting no benefit for it whatsoever, go back to the Emerson decision, I will, I will be sustained in the legal case. So if I just have a sprinkler system and, and I just sprinkle it, I can't prove how much water is not going into the sewer. But if I have a meter and I can prove that that water is not going, and it, it is it, not going into the sewer system. One other fact, we have strong drains for water. Storage is supposed to be a self-contained system. If anything else is getting into that storage, we have a problem with this town. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Charlie. Yeah, I just have one question for the proponents of this article. I still cannot get my arms around why this second meter is not available to people who want to water their lawns with a hose. Well, hey, let me finish. Yeah, right. sure. Uh, you can water it with you can water your lawn with a hose for a second meter. You can buy a mechanical timer and put it on that outlet and still have uh, metered time, if you will, on the use of the water. And I'm concerned that your proposal is some sort of an economic uh, program by the people who install ground uh, water systems to to sell more of these systems. It it, it could it could it could seem that way, but it certainly does. You, no, but. The whole thing is, is if with a handheld, with a, a battery-operated time without a rain delay, you're not shutting it off when it's when it's raining, and that that's the the whole thing of this. And the other thing is, with the in-ground systems, the water is aimed, pre-adjusted to go where it's supposed to go. Whereas if somebody's got a hose going in their water and they set it down and ends up in the, out in the street, it's it's just it's it's. But, but you agree that, that if I'm watering the, the, the hose, uh, the one with the hose, uh, I'm being charged 
uh, you are. inappropriately for sewage, the, just, just the way you complain about the in-ground systems. Mm -hmm. So therefore, why include that provision in the article? Well, because if it's not in there, the article won't go anywhere. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's the, that's the whole, you know, so you, it's, you're getting rock, you're being put between a rock and a hot place, sort of needlessly. Like I said, my whole idea was to save some water here, and, and that's what this would do. I think the complaint was uh, last time around that people could use the hose off that second water meter, fill up their toilets, fill up their, you know, just because there's no control over it. So this that, would at least have some control over it. That, that's, that's why I wrote it as tight as I wrote it. Okay, okay. Uh, any new issues or, or new things? Uh, Grant and then John and then... Seems not exactly direct. The people most concerned with conservation wouldn't wear the long hose. You know, landscaping is good for the environment. You know, the grass, the lawns, the trees, they all help clean the air. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing. Landscaping. Growing your rose. Landscaping meaning the material on the ground. The shrubs, the trees, everything. They clean the air. They, you know, they protect the air. They clean the ground water. So, I mean, it's, it's all a good thing. And it's to encourage that. It's to encourage landscaping. And I have all the people who want to do what they want to do. But I don't think that was a brilliant conservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're still clean for the water. It encourages them not to use more water than they need. These systems put the exact amount of water in the right place at the right time. Okay. Okay. I, I think we've pretty much gone around this. Right. Uh, John, something new? Yeah. Okay. For myself. Sure. Uh, how? What's the process by which the charge for water, as opposed to the charge for sewer, how is that determined? Is that MWRA, or is that the town that determines? Well, I, I assume that the town sort of pays like a wholesale rate to the MWRA and then has sort of a retail rate that is charged to people that takes into account the extra cost involved in running the water department. Um, so, so it's the town that would determine how much, what proportion would be paid of by the one meter system as opposed to the other meter system. Is that correct? The, the town would set the, the sewage rate, yes, and the, and, yeah. and the water rate as well. Yeah. I believe the water rate is independent of the sewage rate because it, seem, it seems to be, so yeah. I guess the water commission is whatever. The town determines that. Yes. Not, not to do because right. I didn't know that. Well, I, I'm sure the MWA governs it to some extent by what they charge the towns. You know, it's like buying bananas and selling it. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you. It's been very enlightening. Um, I'd like to make a recommendation now. Uh, you know, right now I could vote either way with about five explanations on why I'm doing it both ways. Um, I think one of the key factors is the ability of the town uh, to, to establish the software and the cost of, of setting this up. Um, we have the manager coming in here next week. Um, it, perhaps it would be good to table this until then and get the, uh, the manager's uh, recommendations or opinions on uh, uh, how much this will cost and, and go from there. How would it cost anything? I'm sorry? How would it cost anything to the town? Well, you, you, you're setting up new accounts to, for second meters. Uh, software, I just want to find out about it. Ken? Why are we asking the town manager? Is this generated from the treasurer's office? Um, I'm not sure if it's generated from the treasurer or from the, the, uh, the water sewer. I'm sorry? And the manager's in charge of water sewer. Yeah, and the manager's in charge of water sewer. Mm -hmm. So moved. Okay, second? Second. Okay, Carol? Can I also make a motion that we pull up Ryan's notes from two years ago because he did a, a, a fair amount of research on this. Um, because he was working for DPW and which town did he used to work in? That's a good idea. Grant, can you go back and make sure that Ryan hasn't thrown out his notes from this? Or, or if we have. Yeah. Okay, you got it. 
Okay, if you can, uh, if he has them in, in, in a form that's, uh, you could uh, kind of send them out to everybody. Kind of tough, though, this is, you know, a volume. And what's the, what's the question? I mean, I can maybe. Well, I mean, the question is, is, is did, did Ryan have a set of notes or recommendations that he might have put together in a memo fashion that we, that we, you could, we could circulate? Okay. Or do we have them in our own record? Yeah, I don't remember. Grant, could you either take a look through all your stuff or take or call Ryan and, and see if he has a, uh, a memo or something like that that he a recommendation that he made yeah, to us two years ago. He did a uh, okay, Stephen. Thank you. Just a question now on if this does go forward and the, the way the law was written is it's still that the time I was. Are we going to see what the amendment would look like or what administratively the language would look like before we're going to vote? And if so, who's going to provide that to us? Is it the proponents or is it um, town council? The, 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 the recommendation, uh, you know, we would have the town council draft up a, a bylaw that could have anything that we wanted into, including, you know, penalties for cheating or something like that. Uh, so we could draft it however we want, but I think uh, th there's sort of a, uh, a value issue here um, as, as far as equity uh, that's been articulated to us and that, that Charlie has also articulated sort of a different angle. So there's a value question here, but there's also a cost issue. You know, is there a cost to the town which is simply too great to justify? Uh, and I, I'll talk to the manager and say, you know, these are the issues we want you to deal with. The value issues uh, are something that, you know, we have to think about ourselves. Okay, Alan and then Paul? Yeah, there is a, a one paragraph note in our 2012 uh, report recommending no action on it. Uh, it talks about people using less water, subsidizing more water. But again, if you look at the town of Lexington water rates, Two different meters. One's six and a half dollars per hundred cubic feet. The other one's twenty-four dollars per hundred cubic feet. So, depending on how much water is going through this meter and that meter, could really make an impact on the, on the cost of the expensive meter. Yeah. So, you know, I, we need to have some kind of forecast on what what difference it would make to the rates because it could be pretty pretty substantial. Okay. One would think. Uh, did you appear before the selectmen tonight on this issue? No, I um, the, the town council did review the way I wrote that. Okay, that's fine, but uh, do they have you scheduled to appear before them? Not that I know. Uh, this is the first time I've done anything like this. So okay, sure. uh, because this, this will be a selectman's main motion, so you, you will be appearing be, before them. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that they'll be calling you. Um, any additional information that you, could, uh, that you have, if you could email it to Gloria, our executive secretary, sure. okay. uh, and she, she'll share it with us. All right. So again, Paul? That's right. I'd like to, uh, a couple of things. I want to find out what the management of the town say about this. Uh, we've heard from uh, the uh, treasurer collector, uh, but I'd like to hear from the manager and the water department um, on this. And I'd like to hear what the selectmen have to do. Um, and then we could either, you know, support their recommendation or oppose it or whatever the committee feels like. Um, okay, is there any other questions or thoughts? Okay, motion is made and seconded to table. Uh, this until we uh, have the manager in before us. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so it's table. Thank you. Okay, thank you, good. Thank you very much. Uh, just a minute. Yes, Grant? Uh, well, two things. One is that I did have an album one of the things that says uh, there was a study done by the Department of Services that took into a whole bunch of issues, and one of them that didn't address the issue of the second water meter in the, within their recommendations. Um, briefly, uh, nonetheless, it's recommended that Darwin consider the use of weekly water meters for sewer billing rather than allowing for piecemeal air installation or irrigation for other meters. So basically, the study or the, the consultant 
Okay, and when was this? Um, last year. Last year or the year before, but yeah. Okay. Somewhere. The year before. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. June. I'll try to raise these issues and we'll get feedback from the management uh, mm -hmm. when it comes in. And uh, uh, we'll have a lot to do on March 5th uh, on this. Okay. Uh, we have a half hour left. Uh, Gloria, did the assessors ever show? No, I'll give them a call tomorrow. Okay. Uh, every time they miss it, we cut their, what they requested in half, so. Um, one to the year, minute in. Um, okay, one of the issues uh, that we've uh, put off, uh, or we have on our plate is the acceptance or rejection of the uh, changes to the Minuteman Regional Agreement. So, uh, Charlie, do you want to tell us what's happened since? Well, since, um, since we last discussed this, uh, there has been a final clean copy of the version accepted by the um, Minuteman School Committee um, uh, distributed. And I think that Gloria uh, emailed that to everybody and also gave you a physical copy the other day. I think it's dated January 27th or something like that. So, um, the, re the recommendation, I think, I think there's a motion before the committee to uh, accept the revised agreement as we have discussed. And by the way, that, I think as I mentioned uh, <coughs> recently, that um, final version includes a uh, one cleanup fix that uh, was recommended by, by Lynn. And, um, I mean, I think we've discussed it yet, other than if you have a clean copy in your hands. I didn't want to have a vote on it without the final version uh, in the hands. It, and it's, it's what we've discussed and a lot of, uh, you know, typos and minor uh, misses have been corrected. Okay, so everybody's had this for a while. Your recommendation, Charlie, is for favorable action. Favorable action. Okay. What's the motion? The, uh, Charlie Minuteman, Minuteman, Minuteman Regional Agreement as, as revised. Second. Second. Okay, so uh, discussion, Dean? I'm just going to make a motion. Oh, okay. Okay, is there uh, is any it, discussion this? or questions on this? Peter? This is an article, isn't it? Yes, it's Article uh, 21. Then it's to the Regional Agreement. <laughs> and and I, I guess I would like to suggest um, to, uh, the, 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 the recommendation that we are supporting with respect to Article, say it was 21? 21. 21. Yes. Is this uh, draft dated 2-12-2014? Uh, and, um, and that we are uh, prepared to uh, receive whatever uh, final recommendation is made by the, by the uh, Minuteman School Committee. And if they change this, we have to revote it. In other words, when we get the when they're coming before us with a with a recommended vote. Now, is this draft as of two twelve after the school committee made those? Is after all the changes, etc. Okay. Uh, Bill, did you have a question? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. So, okay. I, so in short, I believe that this is the final recommendation of the Minuteman School Committee. But you know, when it goes before town meeting, it could be different. They could have some other recommendation. In which case, we would have to reconsider our vote. Okay, motions from made and seconded. Are there any other questions or any other discussion? Okay, all those people in favor of the uh, amendments to Vinnivan Regional Agreement, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Now, has the Board of Selectmen already voted? I think you said they had. Uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen, um, in, I'll use the term, endorsed it uh, the, the, the same night that I gave the presentation to the Finance Committee. But they were planning to hold a separate hearing. I don't know when they scheduled that hearing. But they, uh, the, you know, the town manager has all the information. Okay. Okay, at this point, um, we have the do we have any budgets? Paul? You can do the fire drill. Okay. Can you grab there?
I assume that's the reason that it's minus $28,000 in heating costs.
billed the insurance company for every call. I and mean, we accepted the payment. And what we found out was the ambulance was a profit center. And what we did was we did away with the co pays to the people that lived in town, obviously, because they're paying for the service through their taxes. And we didn't want to put an additional burden on them when they've already paid it. So it was just a question in general that I would propose um, to, just to see what, what the answer is and how much reimburse the profit, what that profit is. I will uh, ask the chief about that. Okay, Peter. Uh, Paul, did you get, <coughs> concerning the EMS uh, chief, um, is there any reason besides fears of liability for having that position that he mentioned? Um, one other reason is that um, the administrative staff that he has um, is uh, overworked at this point, and they don't cover not just EMS, $685,551. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Favorable action. Unanimous. 224. Uh, anybody have any small budgets? Page 29. Okay, David. Okay, as you can see, um, basically on the manager's budget, the original uh, a lot of increases, with the exception of the wages and salary. Um, so all the, uh, the expenses that are going to stay the same previous year, so recommending that the, uh, as presented, 491,391. That's the budget. I'll second that. Okay, so a motion's been made and seconded. Are there any uh, questions or discussion? Okay, I'll 
sec motion has been made and seconded for favorable action uh, for 491,381. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Any other little budgets? Okay, in accordance with the Mary Ronan rule, minus five minutes. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. And uh, so on Wednesday, we have the uh, transportation advisory, electronic voting, and car oils. Yeah, I can just see you sharpening your knife.